we have a block, guys. Oh. Fear of confrontation. Oh. <laughs> You, know, you don't I, even like hearing about it. I, I don't know if it's so much fear as it, it is just something that I don't like. I just you don't like tension. I don't like tension. I don't like to get in people's faces. I don't like, you know, it, it, I, you know like on social media. Like mm -hmm. um, I obviously, I, you know, I don't use social media as much as I used to. But even back in the day, I never discussed politics or religion or anything remotely controversial. And I mean, there's a pragmatic reason for that because you don't want to alienate half your audience. Yeah. But more more than that, I, I just didn't like, you know. When they find out you're Republican. Go ahead. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't like. You uh, were saying. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, just, I just didn't like confrontation. Um, it, it's, it's, and, I, and I have friends. I have a lot of friends that just thrive on your that. Your gun is in the safe. Yeah. When, when we're done here, I'm going to give you back your gun. You go back. <laughs> no you problem. Can walk back into the streets <laughs> no. with your gun out. With his gun out. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Who does that? Um, okay. Uh, yeah. No, I know what you mean. Like it is, I don't, I'm more itching for a fight naturally. So mm -hmm. I don't mind confrontation. I don't mind uh, disagreement. Yeah. There are people like, I mean, people like you obviously, but um, yeah, I, I don't like that. I don't like getting in flame wars. I don't like people not liking me. You know, yeah. I just, and I'd rather just kind of like, why, you know, if you, if you take my parking spot at, at a, a Trader Joe's, I'll just may, maybe roll my eyes. That's about as much as I'll do. If you're in a horrible mood, yeah. you'll if roll I, your I, eyes. Well, you know, I, I, um, I deal with anger and I don't know if it's a health, probably not a healthy way, but I, I, I never yell at people ev ev un unless it's like as a joke and we're both in on the joke. Right. Uh, but I've never, I don't think I've ever yelled at somebody in anger. What if I get like really angry um I'll, I'll get very quiet i'll just like let it eat me up on the inside fantastic it's great what a policy <laughs> um i'm a yeller and i regret every single one of them mm -hmm. like i thought i grew up i'm one of 10 kids irish catholic yelling lost so much yelling yeah so i thought that that's the way to that's do, how it. You do it yeah like so i thought that's the way you do it and it's not <laughs> turns out, turns out it isn't. Oh. Um, I, I, yours I, is. There must be some happy medium between. Do you communicate your issue with people? Well, yeah, and and sometimes it's really effective. Um, like uh, I heard on another uh, a podcast, uh, an interview with Dan Butts, who's an old friend of mine, and he's also the um, uh, um, art director for a lot of my music videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, a l number of years ago, he did something on a set where he really messed something up badly to the to point where we had to fix it in post at a considerable expense. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, 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 I don't remember. You hardly. garnished his wages is yeah. what I understand. No, no, no. no but but I yeah, remember yeah. I, I talked to him on the phone uh, after the, and he remembers this a lot better than I do. But he says that I called him up and, and I said something to, to the effect of, I'm not angry, Dan. I'm just very disappointed. <laughs> And it was traumatic for him. He was like, I've never heard Al lose it like that. Yeah. That was like, yeah. like the most I've ever been like dressed down by Al. And and were you angry and did you let it eat you? Or did you just do you get through it quickly? I, I got through. I mean, it was like a, it was a bummer. And you know, I I know know that he didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. And and you know he, you know you danced a little close friend and it was it wasn't uh, I mean it, we it cost us a lot of money but but you know I I told him like you messed up and yeah. he acknowledged it and moving on yeah um I I'll tell you what I would have done it would have he would have done it intentionally and I'm telling you about my inner monologue uh -huh. he did this intentionally <laughs> everyone's trying to fuck me. <laughs> all the time life's trying to fuck me despite the mounds of success and everyone's trying to fuck me all the time and uh and i would have thought the i have i owe it to him to yell, or i owe it to myself to yell at him mm -hmm. this will be my revenge but again it it doesn't work do you think I should like revisit this with him? I think <laughs> years a, there's a lot of meat left on that bone. Oh, okay, you could, you, I would be bringing Let's it call up him right now. <laughs> I'd be bringing. I'd be waiting to bring it up. Like this is just like the fucking whatever. <laughs> um, but I had a interesting Al. I had an interesting thing happen. Was on MDMA. Don't do it. 
you wouldn't like molly like the kids yeah, say yeah, yeah 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 they now they've gone back to mdma okay. they've gone like past um because everything's science and uh -huh. psychology now um <laughs> everything's healing um and i had i was thinking about my multiple enemies my enemies list and uh gotta keep that list okay you have to um or as you call it the disappointment list um <laughs> And I had uh, no problem forgiving them, right? And then a couple days later, I was like, I had, when I was flooded with oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine, it was very easy for me to forgive people, right? And then I thought about what I'm like most of the time. And what I realized is I don't have enough good chemicals. So most of my, the chemicals in my brain are cortisol and adrenaline. So that's why I'm yelling. That's why I'm petty. That's why. And I'm like, you need I'm the gonna, right drugs. That's your I, whole thing. I know. I know. So, but I've been, I've been on SSRIs. I've been on everything, but I'm saying I realized what I consider my personality is not even my personality. It's just the chemicals on hand. So who are you really? There's no way of knowing. I was hoping you could help. <sighs> if you're just joining Let's us, peel that onion. 1-800- um, no, but I, so I'm realizing that what I consider my personality or the parts of myself, I don't, I really don't especially like, I did, I don't even need to engage with them. So the last week I've just been not engaging with, I feel like I have a kitchen in my brain and it's giving, it's serving mercury sandwiches. And I'm like, I'm just not going to eat it. Wow. Yeah. That's frightening me now. Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I, it's. Are you, are you dangerous? Should I no, be? No, I'm not. Okay. I, it sounds sociopathic or something, but it's, I'm just not indulging the part of myself that I have acid in my brain that wants to eat people. Ooh, that sounds like, kind of cool, basically, actually. Yeah, now it's, now I've made now it sci fi. Cool. Yeah, now I've made it sci fi. Um, <laughs> uh, I, that it just wants to destroy people and criticize and enemies and you did this and vilify and I, and then eventually, believe it or not, turns on myself. I'm trying to stop. And I, I support you. Thank you so much. Tell me more about this uh, movie from the 70s. Go fuck yourself. <laughs>
I I have a hard time expressing myself when I feel like there's been a wrong, and I and I don't. How's that for work? That can't be great for good. work. <laughs> it's not good. It's another thing I'm working on, trying to be a little bit more. Oh, the problem is I, I'm when I am honest and open. It's a little bit uh, abrupt and aggressive, um, and I don't know how to like like sometimes sugarcoat the the message. I, I often do it with humor. <laughs> I try and I try and like if I try to weave it in with a little with a little humor so it doesn't come off as as abrupt. What I think a great plan is is to never say anything, and then when it does come out, it's got so much force. <laughs> that you really hurt a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> that's the best way to approach problems is, okay. and then you resent them for you not having said anything because they somehow made you feel like they that you weren't allowed to say anything even though they never said it they didn't know what was happening how yeah. many funerals do you have in a year uh, there's, a, there's a lot <laughs> <laughs> well that's what's funny is i had no i'm like i think sebastian likes me but there's a point there, but i also do recognize a party that i'm like Oh, that guy could have buried me <laughs> years ago. And I have no, I would have never known. Um, do people ever say, do you got a problem with me? And you then will address it? Or you just go, nah. And you slip uh, out. Uh, yeah, no, you're good. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> and then, and then you slip out. Then I, then I go out the back door. Um, what about work stuff? You got, you know, when you're on the tour, that's you got 50 people at least. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and do you have somebody that you'll sort of whisper, and then they'll take care of it for you? Yeah, I have a, I, I have somebody that I could rely on for you know fixing problems that I see, but you know, I mean, it's not so much in the everyday minutia of work that I have a problem addressing things. It's more like larger personality issues. With, how do you with do that people. with Lana? How do you how do you figure that out? With her, it's just you know, with the people close to me, I don't have a problem with it. With got the, it with the people that you know i have maybe a business relationship with or uh a friend that's not so close to me a family member that's not so close right. to me i tend to draw draw away not not address certain problems it's just better that way <laughs> it, no i mean like you seem like a guy that would um you have a like for example i'm going to i'm going to give you an, an example of how i interpret a few things that you s have said great right i love it this is perfect i'm sure i've offended you 3 times there are 3 moments where i yeah go ahead when you said earlier when i walked in in the movie right and you said i'm going to tell you what somebody said right and not going to tell you who it is yeah oh that's sebastian walking in I interpreted that as there was nobody that was you say, saying that. Okay. <laughs> no, that great. Could, no, great. But that, great. it could be right. It could be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that's how I filter information yeah. that someone is telling me. Right. And just knowing you, there's, a, there's things that you say sometimes that we go, is that, was that a compliment? Or did this guy just give me a dig, right? So the, there's no digs with you. Well, I hope like you're one of my favorite comedians I, ever. I, it, it, I'm not saying yeah, that yeah, we yeah. have a bad yeah, relationship. Yeah. yeah, I like you. You like me. But sometimes you've had me on life support. You've had me on. <laughs> <laughs> you called funeral homes and checked for availabilities. I'm sure. Well, I'm just saying. Sometimes, sometimes my filter whether you mean it or not right oh yes go, will it misinterpret the yes the, well that's another comedy thing where we take the worst possible interpretation of things by the way sometimes we're right <laughs> 70 percent of the time i would say we were right somebody did say it and i i didn't i will i'll tell you after i just don't want to say it on the show no no i yeah, don't yeah, care yeah. who it was but what i'm saying is sometimes i misconstrue right. things just because i'm filtering it a completely different way than some, you're a some... monster and you assume everybody else is <laughs> but does that make you does that give you like stomach pains you know what i mean or you just put it you just file it away 
No, I just like it. Just, it goes in. I, I, and when you said that, I thought that. And I'm like, okay, okay. And then I just, I just let it go, and we moved on to the yeah. conversation. But like, I was actually thinking about saying that in the moment. Yeah. I go, what was that you? You know. But then I'm like, eh, I'll, I'll you know. There's like, a, I got like a conversation going on in my head half of the time. Of course. Uh, I'm still listening and I'm still yeah. present. But there's like a, there's like a internal it's dialogue. It's like an editing. Uh, when you edit video and there's like the video and then that's, there's that's the, the, the graphics and then there's the sound. Yeah. We all got, I think most human beings have at least two or three tracks. We probably got six or seven. I'm uh, overthinking that. I should have just, I should have just said that and be done with it. And then we move on. But like, I'll, I'll think it. I won't say it. I'll right. suppress it. And then, and then you'll resent me for it. Maybe. And then I'll walk in out of here and I'll call and my wife like, and go, can you believe what this motherfucker said? Yeah. So. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that's life. <laughs> He, I come on his podcast <laughs> and he tells me I'm not active. <laughs> no, but that's, you're not wrong. I mean, I look, I get it. I'm doing the same thing over here. All right. Guy wears a black turtleneck tonight. <laughs> um, number one, not good at confrontation. Hate it. Fa I will say I found that this is a through line with a lot of comedians in that the job description is kind of, we get in these situations, we are furious, but we don't say anything, and then we take it out in the comedy. Yeah, I talk, I take it out in um, podcasting and in comedy, and I also like to talk people, uh, talk about people behind their backs, mm -hmm. but when it comes to one-on-one, -on -one, I'm a coward. Yes. Like, I heard you said this about me. No, I didn't. Here's the recording. That, no. <laughs> no, no. You know what I mean? You get, and you seem to get very Korean. When yeah, I do. Up. Yeah, yeah. Because I get when I get scared, my accent comes out. You know. Yeah, like like um, Ari Spears. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! So I would talk mad shit about him mm -hmm. because he, you know, we had some experiences together, right? Mm -hmm. Then when I saw him, it was fucking scary, dude. He'd heard about it. He had saved all of it from where? From just random podcasts. He had evidence. So he he came up to me, yo, man, you're talking mad shit about me. I go, no, I love you. He's like, listen. And he said, let's go to a clip. Yeah. And it projected onto the wall all the shit. That's <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah. That was terrifying. Did he hire an editor, do you think, or he did it himself? I don't know, but it, it, it made him that mad. That would make me mad. What? If you talk shit about me on podcast. I'm not talking shit. No, no, about me. I do talk shit oh, about you. Oh, about Aries. I don't, I don't, wait, 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 listen, listen, listen. Listen, uh, you I, listen, just said you no, talk shit no, listen, about me. Well, listen, okay. I don't talk shit, okay, my friend. All right. I tell stories, okay, about you. Me, Neil Brennan, or yeah, Aries? It, the proverbial uh, yeah, Neil people, Brennan, people, the proverbial. Right. Right. So I've said things about you. A lot of it wasn't true, but in my mind it was. And we've worked it out over the time. But my point is, is that's another problem of mine. Is, is I have this assumption that people, like even in com conversations, I, I'll take, you know, subtext or whatever and I'll, right uh, and i'll uh, you know what i mean you write fan fiction about people you write science fiction about interactions you've had yeah because growing up as a as a trauma kid right mm -hmm. like you just make trauma this, boys that's what they call it the yeah trauma the trauma boys, boys right with a z so i would i would always have to read my dad you know what i mean and yeah, my mom of course. right and and that just kind of spilled out into like other social things where you're doing it every interaction is there's hostility there's right. potential for violence exactly or when i walk into a restaurant like people if i'm on a date they're like what are you doing i go i gotta find where all the exits are so i like i'll ro roam around the fucking restaurant and look and you do that right now like in this building i did it i walked into this building I'm like, okay, you do a is, sweep i do a sweep yeah and i don't know why i do it i, I mean i know why but it's like it's safety you want a clear space to do your nuclear <laughs> TikTok celebration <laughs> or your Fortnite celebration? That's no, your... but it's like it's like if there's like you know an Aurora, you know, you know um, what's why I don't know, Aurora. I don't. I literally. Oh, when a shooting. Yeah, at the movie theater. Aurora. Yeah, yeah. It's been like a while, but yeah. Yeah, but there was a Colorado movie. Yeah, of course. Movie you're, theater. For, you're the kid out of orange hair. Yeah. No, I'm not the kid. I'm the victims. I get it. I know yeah, who yeah. you are. So when I walk into a movie theater, I do it. I go, because of Aurora, I go, that's X exit. I can go up this stairs, these stairs. And I, I, I have it planned out before I, the movie starts. Do you have a tidal wave exit plan? 
Yeah. What is it? A tidal wave? Like a huge wave I hits find, LA. I, yeah, so I, I was in Hawaii once. Mm -hmm. And this is so fucking fucked up. I was in Hawaii once by myself. And they slid a fucking paper underneath my door. Mm -hmm. And I picked up and it said tsunami coming. Right? And then all of a sudden I heard these sirens. And I was the what first floor are you on? I was on the second floor. I was the first guy on the rooftop. <laughs> yeah. Like people, like people got up there 20 minutes later. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I've been up here. Yeah. You yeah I had camped, a fucking scuba thing. A fire, I, had a scuba, yeah. I had the whole scuba thing and my wetsuit on. <laughs> I was fucking ready, dude. That's exciting. And it never came. But I stayed up there for eight more hours just in case. Because you had to. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah, I'm that guy. I prepare. And all right, so you, that's your tsunami and you've lived it. You were, you I had a tsunami warning. A, 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 a tsunami warning. And you got the flippers and you had the flippers, the wetsuit, the fucking snorkel, goggles, the whole thing. Yep. I had a Bible. Great. Great. Right. I had my cigarettes, even though, like, I know I would yeah. smoke back then. So no, I but thought, that's not going to do great in a. I've I know. Never, I know although I, know. I would be funny to see one of those videos <laughs> of a guy floating <laughs> in a huge river with his head stuck out. Yeah. Like a fucking mechanic. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. So, like, you know, in every scenario, like, if there's tornadoes, I would have one different thing, you know. What's your tornado? Well, I, I only know ba based on um, a Twister, the movie. You so, mean, Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt. You mean Han, the, the wetsuit and the mouthpiece no, wasn't well-researched? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I make, I know. I make probably faulty assumptions no, of, course, of what yes. to do, right? Yeah. But still, I need to do it. So in Twister, right, remember, they latch themselves out in like a fire hydrant or whatever. So I looked at fire, like if I'm in Oklahoma, I go, where's the fire hydrants? Oh, interesting. And oh, a here's a good question. Yeah. What? Do you have a uh, mass shooter plan? I've done this. Oh, yeah, I do. F different comedians come to the store with a gun and are shooting people. What's your plan? Not only that, I know I already have a list of people who might. I, I absolutely do. I That's bet if we... And I can't if, tell you who they are. No, I don't. But I have a short list of people, right? So whenever I'm on the lineup with them, it's here already. Are you going to bargain with them? Are you going to hit them with like, come on, man. You know, We worked... We there's did three the, guys that there's nothing I have. There's three guys, right? You're getting popped. I'm dead. <laughs> there's three guys. I know I'm just dead. There's nothing I can say. Money, there's nothing. You know what I mean? So I hadn't like, even thought about bribing people. Yeah. I might have to tell somebody I'll do a sketch show with them. <laughs> I'll be a showrunner. Yeah, I'll, I'll be a showrunner show show sketch show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, we got to get through this. <laughs> yeah, I'll do, I'll do six episodes up front. Yeah, but I have that list, and I know the comments. In fact, tonight I have. There's one guy on the lineup. I can't tell you who it is. Wow, who could be a shooter? So I'm, I, I like, I, I am. I'm That's at the store. I say, I say hi, but I, I am. You know what I mean? Interesting. Super nice. Yeah, of course. You Great be. set, even though I didn't see it. You didn't Great see it. Great set, man. Yeah. yeah, so there's nothing. And have you developed a plan to get better at it, or are you just no, hoping yeah, you don't like, get caught? Well, I'm on medication. That helps. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Ritalin. Great. And then also, You like it? I love it. Great. Secondly, I also need to do boundaries. And I think that's what fucked up my relationship with Kalila. I just never, we never fought. Mm. I just absorbed everything. But there were resentments building yeah and it was like she's you know she's a hot chick i don't want her to leave right right so i would just absorb all this stuff right resentment and then she gets to the point where there's nothing you can do with it except you become miserable it's in every conversation yeah if you don't clear it yeah you literally bring it so i can't like afford to do that anymore so i'm learning to do all that go hey you know what you just said to me really hurt my feelings or you know this is how I feel about, you know what I mean? It's hard. It's so hard, yeah. When I first started going to a 12-step meeting about uh, codependence, I would, if I was going to talk to somebody on the phone, I'd have a, like, literally I'd bullet point the things I wanted to say. Wow. When I called them. This is back when we used to call people on the phone. Yeah. But, like, you have to. You have to. Because otherwise, you get, caught up in the swirl of what their of their counter argument and then you're fucked yeah it's a very hard thing to do is ask for what you want it's hard to know what you want yeah but but i think our new i mean your new you know what i mean um idea of god right mm -hmm. maybe can't we just incorporate that that like i, I mean i believe that 
I wouldn't change anything of my past because I feel like it all led me to this moment in my life. Mm -hmm. And I love my life, right? So it's like, and I have to believe that all that stuff in my head, and it could be wrong, happened all the way it was supposed to happen and for a reason. And I tried to make the most healthiest choices for myself. You know what I mean? So from this uh, moment onward, you know, I have to believe that as well, that like things are just going to happen. I'm going to meet the right person. Do you ever feel that way or no? Well, well no, just like I, no, 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 when you, no, no, I don't no, think it's random events because my thing is like I've had an incredibly fortunate life. Amazing. Right? And but there are times where I wonder when you look at like the hard parts or you look at the downs, whatever, the difficult chapter, whatever. And you go, why did that happen? Yeah. What, what am I supposed to make of that? Yeah, that's the part I have a hard time with. The thing about a belief in God that makes that I like is it does make me feel like whatever happens in my life is okay. Meaning if I end up with somebody, great. If I don't end up with somebody, also great. Yeah. And not even because like God somewhere and loves me. My experience of God was not even loving or venomous or it was just like, it was just such, it was like dealing with like a super, super duper, 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 duper power. So it was not even like, oh, and we have a relationship. I didn't have any sort of relationship with the thing I experienced. Right. But you have one now? No. I mean, no, not in that I don't pray to it. I just think that there's a f- energetic field that I can go to through meditation or prayer, whatever you want to call it, that I don't really understand what's going on. And even just talking about it 15 seconds ago, I felt like a... Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Like I felt like a, and my energy shifted a little bit where I was like, am I about to pass out just for like a split second? <laughs> yeah. Do you, so, be- do you believe in manifestation? Are you asking me, do I listen to Joe Dispenza and do the <laughs> manifestation thing almost daily? No, no. I mean, I believe in, yeah, I guess the short answer would be yes. Okay. The Joe Dispenza thing was Joe because I do listen to it. Yeah, yeah. So do you believe in manifestation? Yeah. Let's move on. Let's next one. <laughs> so you're not good at confrontation. You're addicted to tragedy porn. I have a joke about the body clock that you've seen, whether you realize it or not. I have seen it. So ISIS has gone after a rock club in Paris, and they've gone after a gay club in Orlando. So I don't. I just mention it in the setup. Yeah, yeah. And it's. But I'm okay with that. Right. Too. It's yeah. incredibly personal to you. Yeah. yeah. And it's to me. It's a piece of new. You know. I mean, obviously, but, like well, I watched but, the documentary, and like I'm pretty well versed in it and jimmy carr and i have talked about it a lot and like but love jimmy by the way yes he's the best but 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 what i think is where many folks go wrong in my opinion is that you have to tell that joke and i have and and i know how i feel about it there's nothing that can change that right my feelings about it are remain unaffected by jokes for against with about uh, it's the that's that's what I already have. Yeah. And and I already have that experience, you know. And so it's like I when people get offended, I'm I always think to myself, "Oh my god, you're such a precious motherfucker." Because everything else they've talked about, someone has talked about didn't bother you. You're okay to laugh for that. And then someone someone William tells you and splits the arrow with the arrow and now you're like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, how dare you. And, and that's a bit of arrogance in the outrage because it's it also, also just bo- people fucking have giant But blind also you're spots. you're free to leave. You well, know? yes. It's one I, of the last freedoms. For me. It's one of America's great freedoms, the freedom right. to split. Yeah. Right? That no one seems to be able to touch. I'm going. And it's like, "Good. Yeah. Let me okay, grab your I... bag, motherfucker." Yeah. I you know, uh it's the it's the older you get, the more you realize like not being near something it's critical is the, for <laughs> gr- one of the greatest gifts i, I don't want to say it's life's greatest gift but it's up there <laughs> being able to extricate yourself from things because your brain will stop thinking about it you will stop experiencing it emotionally it's one of the a byproducts magic trick. of leaving it's right. a fucking magic trick <laughs> right get the fuck out of there yeah it's, it's, that people yeah. don't realize like oh you don't like a person or a relationship or a situation or a smell or whatever go away from it yeah well i just can't but but for me it's whoa excuse i can't imagine saying i don't want to hear about this 
And also, I need the entire conversation of everyone else about it to stop. That's yes. the part I don't get. Where it's like, I'm upset, and this has got to stop around me, although I'm not leaving, so everyone's got to get involved with my exact wishes. That It just seems like an arrogant throw that's always really annoyed me. It's and, also, and I think, frankly, it, it makes me want to go at someone more in, in that course. You know, uh, it's the world's unfathomably large, and that people talk about like you have main character syndrome or whatever. We all have main character. It's it's the situation where I can only see it from these two eyes. From this, yeah, what the, fucking choice do you have? Yeah. So, but because you, you can't believe that there's this many experiences, you just it's like when people go, "Do you see your Spotify stats?" You know. People spent uh, 400 million hours listening to Queens of the Stone Age. And you're like, <laughs> that means nothing to me. Yeah. yeah. That means fucking nothing to me. And the same thing with, I can't believe that my point of view isn't everyone's. And it isn't incredibly important to yeah, everyone. Yeah, get started with mine, too. It's the actual call to action about it, too. That's <laughs> worse. Yeah. You know? Like, hello, people. Let's get started. I'm offended. Let's get yeah. to work. You know? Yeah. Okay, this is a good one. Well, all right. We did. I don't even know if we avoided uh, if we talked about avoiding conflict. I think we did. I I just I'm 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 ready to roll up my sleeves. I have a gold tooth that I've earned in my life. You uh -huh. know, and I I've realized that as a big six foot five guy, that I've been told so many times, like when you get angry, it's scary. I'm too big to get upset is what I've heard a lot of times. You know? Right. You're not, you're not, I'm not allowed. Entitled, yeah. And so, you know, I've figured out a way to not let that make me upset. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Because I don't want to be easily manipulated by someone's frustration. Have you gotten better at the language of, I hear where you're coming from. And my experience is, like because we're from a time yeah, when I, everyone just yelled fuck you you made me all these yeah. accusations and uh, I'm well versed forced. at that sort of back and forth dialogue use your words Danny mm -hmm. um and then and and I know where to put myself in all of that because being misunderstood or having a misunderstanding by nature is something that doesn't need to exist but now does and I think commu good communication is the key and that also, I also know that when I finally get the opportunity to say, uh, yeah, but I don't give a fuck, so why don't you shut the fuck up? That that I'd hate to miss that opportunity as well. <laughs> and you don't, you, you're you not ready to learn, unlearn that? You still think it's valuable? I still think there's a, there's a moment for everything. <laughs> uh huh. And, and, I, and, and I still think that um, those moments are so rare now and I'm happy about that because I don't miss the bickering of bullshit, you know. And of course, my friend would say, don't waste the hate, you know. There's so few things worth the time. But I think a big thing for helping me of sort of avoid conflict has been really, you know, focusing on what I actually like. Now, it seems very simple, but it's like, if I don't like this table, I don't want to bond over not liking it together. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like, this fucking thing, look, the tooth's. Yeah, you know, two levels and the gold yeah. is bullshit. And then you go, yeah, and that's how we become friends. Yeah, you know, I really focus. You don't think that could be destructive long term, do you, <laughs> Josh? Are you saying that those types well, these of things relationships these things happen, right? And, can and, only sustain on a shared hatred, and you start looking for well, shared hatred, <laughs> and then you're there. You are welded to get welded together by trauma, you know. Yeah, and 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 so I just think um, really realizing how little time we have it's okay f to say we're on the titanic it's we're all going to hit the water i i believe that's it's not negative it's it's like what do you want to do with the time we have left let's yeah. get into what you know there isn't tons of time left neil do you have a good eye for it when to be contrite when to be a peacemaker and when to be a a, a war maker I've made a lot of war in my days, and and so it's got me really excited about, like I said, being a good communicator and you know, working as a record producer. What is that? At the end of the day, it's really about being a good communicator and not having to put yourself all over a situation. Uh -huh. You know, it doesn't. It's not going through your filter. It's going through your conduit. 
that isn't filtering anything. And, and I think that requires good communication. I love compromising, you know, um, cause that's what collaborating is, you know? So, um, I've kind of lost my taste for war, you know, because it, it takes up so much time and spirals out of control. I mean, all right, here's devil's advocate. Has war been good to you? I've learned a lot. Meaning have you great songs, great shows, great from war? Yeah. Yeah. But I've also learned that anger is the, it's okay to drive your car on anger for 50 miles, but you don't want to run on that all the time. Mm -hmm. It'll burn you out. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it having that be your focus, anger, war, like conflict, you know, constantly gritting your teeth like that. There's, it's just, uh, in terms of, in, in that discussion of we're on the Titanic and it's sinking. So what do you want to do with your time left? I think I'm done spending my time there. You know, I, I'm done spending my, my time in the unpredictable time suck that is heavy conflict. There's just not enough time for that now. Yeah. I also think it's kind of a young man's game. Yeah. Yeah. Hence I'm, I'm 50. How old are you? 49. Yeah. I'll never be 50. Yeah. <laughs> I would fucking imagine me fucking. You know, it's a heavy responsibility, get lost, Neil. Get lost. <laughs> I will never. Someday I would never when your mother and I. That. <laughs> fucking imagine me. I'm going to bleep both of our ages. All right. Block number one. Right, right. Avoiding confrontation. That's right, which is uh, very original. And you were saying all comedians. Every Bobby had it, Bobby Lee, Sebastian. I certainly have it to a degree. I see it mostly, which I you don't. You have, have it the least. I don't have it bad. I the problem is it's we're all people pleasers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Give me some snapshots of avoiding confrontation in your life. Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, well, you know the biggest example that I used in my special is. When an intruder came to my house, this is very literal. Uh, my instinct was hide, uh, you know, maybe look for a weapon-ish thing and just hide. Maybe run away if possible. Maybe move, yeah. you know. My husband's was opposite. Uh, we Go towards the guy. Go confront him physically. Go yeah. try to stop the situation. With my body and the clothes on my back. Very different people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's literal, <laughs> like yeah. physical avoiding confrontation. An intruder is a pretty big one. That's not like I couldn't say no to a podcast <laughs> or I couldn't <laughs> say no to a birthday party. Sure. Like an intruder oh, sure. is like fight or flight. Yeah. But in intense, crazy situations like that, you really tr show your true colors, I feel like. Yeah. You know? And it was interesting where I was like, wow, I was going to let my husband die because I was like, well, you know, like, we're just renting anyway. Like, we should just move. In my head, I was like, we'll move. We're no longer safe here, you know? Yeah, immediately. Quick, quick to, instead of being like, no, we built a life here, which is the things my husband You were on Zillow while the intruder was still there, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if yeah, if I had, um, if had, if your true, your true, true colors. If came I had out. my <laughs> my tabs were still open though from yeah. before he came, so if my true, true, true yeah, colors yeah, yeah. came out and it was white. Yeah, my husband would say things like, you know, no, we built a life here. We should at least keep trying. If we move, the intruders win. Was yeah, that yeah, kind of thing? that kind of thing. But also, it's like it's not so easy to just pick up and move in yeah. LA. You have to now find a new place and that's hard and w there's rent control here we have a good relationship with our landlord you know like yeah but i'd rather go through bigger hurdles than to avoid a confrontation i got to say yeah intruders a big one of course intruders like personal physical life and safety <laughs> But I know. you're allowed to flee. Oh, then I was going to somehow try to get to the time, you know, I, whatever, was late to something or whatever. No, no, no <laughs> but what, what, what's the more like that kind of thing? Like, do you find yourself overbooking yourself? Do you find yourself saying sure. yes to too many things you don't really want to do? Yes, all the things, right? Of a people pleaser, right? I'm a people pleaser. I started going to a 12-step group. Mm-hmm that is based on codependency mm -hmm. and overcoming codependency. So it's about 
creating boundaries for yourself. Yeah. Uh, within social dynamics. Yeah. But it's really hard to the point where they have meetings every day. Right. Of because course. it's very hard yeah. to ask people to meet your needs. A hundred percent. I always say like, you don't really change as a person from when you're a kid to now. The only thing that changes is your boundaries. Yes. Right. I think that's it. You just realize the energy you have for things more, yes. better, you know? So you go, oh, okay, I'm still the same person. I still want to people please. I want to say yes to everything. But oh, I know that thing makes me really tired. I know three podcasts in a row makes me tired. I did it the other day or five shows or in a row or whatever. So you know you don't do that. You yeah. don't do that. <laughs> and then people, it's like with stand-up, a tell mm -hmm. is from the school of like, you do six spots a night. No. I mean, you can. Sorry. Right, sorry. Guttural. In, in, no. Guttural you have, you created a boundary. No. <laughs> um. My nose starts to bleed. <laughs> what is he? Want to die? <laughs> Okay, so let's get into some blocks. Avoiding confrontation. Mm -hmm. This is a common thread in on the show. Yeah. At least half of our guests have had it as a Sebastian had it, Bobby Lee had it. I definitely have it. Tell me about how you avoid confrontation and when did you realize, like, I have to stop doing this? Mm. I think my family is like a very nice family. We're mm -hmm. all very nice to each other that in many ways is beautiful, but it also means we don't directly deal with confrontation. We just like either ignore it or we wiggle around it with little jokes or like in my case with a lot of people and a lot of things, I just sort of like roll over and fucking show my belly and I'm just like, fine, like whatever you want is okay. How long does that last? There's a tipping point. There's different versions of how one avoid, what kind of confrontation we're talking about. Like, like for example, like, I'll go to the airport and let's say I can like, you know, with my American Express, I should be able to get into the fucking Delta first class lounge. Right. But I don't have my American Express. Right. And I get to the Del Delta first class lounge, the Delta lounge, and they're like, you need the American Express card. And it's like, well, I'm in your system. And they're like, you, you need the card. Yeah. At that point, I say, okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Uh -huh. And I walk away. My wife is I like- I wouldn't even- try you wouldn't even i know like i know what's gonna happen they're just yes. gonna say you're not in the system right and i'm gonna be like embarrassed in front of everybody so i'm not gonna do that to myself yes i will do something very minor minutely like uh, push back yeah and then i am like fair enough i'll fucking go to chili's too you know like <laughs> which is where i want to go to be you know what i mean and i think what i've come to in in this regard is and watch how i do this watch how i flip this i think like as a white straight guy of, Danny is that true is he a white straight guy go ahead we'll find out um, <laughs> right after this <laughs> as a straight white guy who comes from tremendous privilege like it's it's hard for me to like put my foot down to say like I deserve right. more like cause I'm like in the grand scheme of things yeah, yeah. I've been given You're everything VIP, right? so am yeah. I really gonna fucking fight you on like yeah whether I can get into this lounge or not. Like yeah. many more people have many bigger grievances. Than also, the lounge is basically lounge a Radisson. What's the one where they have cereal? They give you cereal? <laughs> the lounge the, or the, the hotel? hotel. Um, embassy Suites. Embassy Suites. It's an Embassy Suites yes. room. Meanwhile, now a lot of airports have like decent restaurants in them. But instead you're like, no, I'm going to sit in the lounge with like a weird businessman yeah, from not Dallas. One. Many, many, all yeah. weird businessmen. All on th IBM ThinkPads. Yes, which you don't even know where they got them. Yeah, they're still using the eracer mouse in the pound, middle of the yeah, keyboard. 40 pound computer. Yes, they're using a 40 pound computer eating so much wildly salty Chex Mix. Correct. From a, like a a, 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 a big plastic dispenser and like cucumber water. Yeah. That's You're like, correct. that's where I'm trying to fight my yeah, way no, to I'm get like, in. Fuck you, get your hands <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need those checks mix, you yeah, bitch. Yeah, so I, or like the coldest cube of fruit you've ever seen. Yep, also true. So in that regard, I will not deal with confrontation. Now with my- Interpersonally, I'm Interpersonally, so there's like the base, like bullshit, whatever. But in general, I'm like this, I, I will just finish by saying that. I think some of my lack of desire for confrontation comes in- if I'm trying to put a positive spin on it, 
as a feeling of empathy, a, a, a sense of empathy for the other. So like the woman at the Dallas airport who does not want to let me into the Delta lounge, I'm like, this woman's just doing her fucking job. Yeah. No, like if she lets me in and there's some camera that's seeing that I never presented my American Express card, she's going to get written up. I don't want this woman to get, what am I, what do I fucking really care? I'm leaving. Then there's the inner, there's the work version of things, which is I, I, just, I need to hit work and personal relationships. Yes. So in work, I want everyone to like me. Mm -hmm. I want people to think I'm easygoing. I want people to think that I'm a pleasure to work with. Is it true or you want people to think it? Both. I I want people to think it so I make it true. Like when you go and scout a location as a right. producer or director and you walk into a room and the set designer is like, this is where we're shooting the podcast, the the tape podcast where Neil does his podcast where he makes his friends talk about their deeper, deepest things and they don't get shit out of it except a fucking clip on Instagram. Mm. Is that that's well the, that's it. the sketch? Well, that's the scene. Well in, worth it. That's the scene in the movie. You're right. It is an uneven trade for me. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. So, by the way, I'm like I hate confrontation, and yet I just keep <laughs> going at you. But you in this, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah. but in this, but to me, that's that is how I also deal with confrontation. Yes. Is like passive aggressive that. jokes. Yeah. Yes. Great. But at least that's in a specific situation where I'm like, no, I can go at you directly about yes. this because like you don't care and I don't care. Right. So, but I think like crying uh, myself to sleep tonight. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but that's not my fault. That's because <laughs> that's you ate fucking cheese or something. Jesus. You vegan loser. So, <laughs> so I think like so in this case, like if we came in here to scout this room, and our our set designer was like, these walls don't work. I'm like I'm like why? It's like well because we got red couches and we can't have the red couches with yeah, the yeah. blue walls. I'd be like, okay, let's find another room. Versus be, me being like, fucking paint the walls. Yeah. Like, and there are times where I wish I was like, paint the walls. And there are other times where I'm like, huh, okay. We got the couches already. What's the now room next door look like? It's five feet smaller, but the walls are the right color. I don't care that much. Let's shoot in the other room. Yeah. I want her to like me. I want less conflict. And I'm also like, what will make for the most, the easiest day? for everybody energetically energetically not you don't you will put the day ahead of the material if need be oftentimes i will because i believe on some level with the work sometimes the energy is more important than the material do you want to guess which one i do <laughs> i have a feeling <laughs> do you want to guess i had a guy one i'm just remember as you tell this story we're location scouting i believe it was on Chappelle's show it might have been on half bake this is how long ago this was in the East Village, we're looking at a at at like buildings. We're outside, and the super is talking, and this the super looks at me and is like, "No, nah, I don't like this guy." <laughs> <laughs> That's how good my energy was. That a super on site was like, "He cannot shoot here." I wasn't even doing anything that bad. I was just so energetically bad, and uh, I want people on set to think I'm a good guy, also, and I do nothing to. Um, Oh, to make them think that. That would be the worst. You are in a prison in that. I will do everything in my power to do. Like, you will in your head want everybody to like you, but then your actions do not belie mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a prison. But what am that's I? That's a block. Still don't that's know a what, block. Look, this and that, friends, I'm not, <laughs> is a block. <laughs> not, look, Cox, like, I'm not doing your podcast. You're doing mine. Um, but I don't know what to do. It happened like days ago <laughs> where I needed a shot to be a certain way and I couldn't convince, I wasn't the director and I was trying to get the director to like, please do running out of light, all the shit. Everyone just ended up not liking me. Mm -hmm. um, but now, I got the shot correct. Yes. And, and like the comedy will be better. Uh-huh. Which is, I guess, good. But I guess it's like, will, I guess I'm always like, will the comedy be better? Yes. Okay. I mean, I'm also not, I don't start out as a director. I think if you start as a director or you, I know you didn't, st I mean, you started as a writer, but aspired and then became a director. There is a certain thing with directors where they are like, this is how I want it. Well, I just know from doing Half-Baked, hold for applause, doing Half-Baked. Uh, Still holding Danny, for someone to Danny, applaud. Danny, Danny, don't give me a standing ovation. No one can see it. Um, we shot the movie, and then we're 23, 
And then the editor was a very famous, had done Liar Liar. Martin Scorsese. Rocky. He had done Rocky and Liar Liar. <laughs> and he did a cut that wasn't right. So I had to sit with the guy, this like adult, you know, gold-plated editor and correct, basically do what I thought it should be. Right. At the first screening, he looks at me and Dave and goes, and this is direct quotes of please. He goes, well, I guess you guys aren't retarded. <laughs> so I'm used to like having to make an enemy. Like that guy hated my guts. Mm -hmm. And I just had to do like, I guess it's just part of like doing it the way you need it to be done is that no one's going to listen. But I, I wish I was more mild mannered or had a better bedside manner than you. I think or better, that like you, I, I think say. it's a, it's a more than anything. It's a bedside manner of like, it's also just like choosing your battles inside of things, but I, all of them. And, and those are the battles I choose. The, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> what battles do I choose? All of them. Hi, uh, I'm Neil Brennan. <laughs> Welcome back to blocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, battle box. Is it too on late? Comedy Central. <laughs> on Comedy Central. <laughs>